books that I read June through September. So I just, because of the craziness of moving and everything, I didn't film a wrap up in that time. So I, I did wanted to tell you about the books that I read. I did do some Friday reads. So some of these will be a little bit redundant if you're watching Friday reads. But firstly, I did read the first four in the Anne of Green Gables series. So Anne of Green Gables, Anne of Avonlea, Anne of the Island, and Anne of Windy Poplars. So last time that I read through this series, Anne of Windy Poplars was what tripped me up. Um, and just 2020 has really been the right time and year to reread the series and reread them as audiobooks because now I'm still excited to read the next books in the series. Um, Anne of Green Gables so far is my favorite in the series. It's just a beautiful, beautiful piece of literature. Um, it's for boys and girls. I read it aloud to Peter and he loved it so much. As I was reading it, he said, Mama, she's talkative like I'm talkative. I was like, yes, yes, she is. Um, then Anne of Avonlea, I enjoyed so much as well, and Anne of the Island. I loved those first three so much. Anne of Wendy Poplars, which was written after all the books in the series, she like came back and wrote Anne of Wendy Poplars, which is set between Anne of the Island and Anne's House of Dreams. Um, it doesn't feel kind of organic like the other ones do. It starts to feel a bit repetitive. I got less invested, but this time I ended up, I think I gave it three stars, whereas before I think I gave it one star. I was just so not into it. So I definitely enjoyed it more the second time around. And now I can finally read through the entire Anne of Green Gables series, which I have never done. I've never read Anne's House of Dreams or the subsequent books. And I'm particularly excited to get to Rilla of Ingleside because I have heard so many people say how good Rilla of Ingleside is. Um, then I listened to the audiobook of the Half-Blood Prince, and it's just been so fun going through the Harry Potter audiobooks this year. And unfortunately, right before Victober, I tried to get through the seventh one, and it expired before I was able to get through it. I was just so busy editing and um, just preparing for Victober, I didn't finish it. So I know exactly what chapter I'm on <laughs> right when they get to Malfoy Manor. Um, so I can just pick up the physical copy because I don't want to have to wait. It, it, I think it took like three months to get um, the seventh one. So I know exactly where I am, but it's just, I, I just want to constantly be on a loop of this series. I find it so incredibly comforting and cozy and um, so just easy. It's like coming home, just reading those books. Um, then I read Waterfalls of Stars. I loved this book. It's easily going to be a favorite book of the year. Um, it's about uh, a woman and her husband. When they're very first married, they go to be wardens of this island off the coast of Wales. And it they just have such a deep, intimate connection with this island. And it, it, it's kind of just an otherworldly experience, a very spiritual experience, just how connected they are to it. And I remember thinking like, how is she going to take up 500 pages talking about this? But it just flew by and hearing about, um, you know, the different wildlife that they became, that they had really close contact with. And she even named some of the seals that live off this island. It has just achingly beautiful writing in it. And um, I'm so glad I finally got to it. And several people have recommended me The Summer Book by Tov, Tov Jensen. Um, and so I definitely want to read that now. Um, then I read, I started like five food books and DNF several of them, but I have two to tell you about. And the first one is Mastering the Art of French Eating. This was a, a pretty average three-star read for me. There was nothing special about her writing style. Um, she moves to France with her husband and then he ends up getting a job just for a year in the Middle East. And so she decides just to stay in Paris and it's about her time there. And it's supposed to be about kind of like how she came to be at home in Paris. Um, but I didn't feel like I got to know her at all. And since it's a memoir, I feel like you should feel like you get to know the person that they really share themselves with you. And I didn't feel that way at all. Um, the one thing I really did appreciate about it is the way she had it set up. She had a different dish that each chapter was centered around. And then um, she traveled to that region of France where the dish is from and researched 
the history of it. Um, so there were a couple dishes I really, really want to make. Um, cassoulet in particular, which takes the recipe that she put. It's just beans cooked with meat, but it's cooked in such a manner and it takes, I think, around three days. So I do want to cook it sometime. Um, and then Always Home by Fanny Singer. Her mother um, is one of the, you know, main people who um, was instrumental in Chez Panisse starting in Paris. It's a really iconic French restaurant, um, but it just has felt really out of touch. There was so much name dropping in this, like, here's the celebrity I know, here's the celebrity I know. And it just felt like she was trying to brag. And I don't think she was. I think she was just a little oblivious, like, how unusual her life is and kind of the privileges that she has had. So I think it was just a little tone deaf, but I, do, I don't think it was intentional. I'm not judging her at all. Um, it just kind of was a little jolting to me. Um, then I read A Dangerous Place. This is the 11th Maisie Dobbs book. And I, I it's the 11th in the series, so I can't really say much about it, but these books have such an ache about them. I love them. I have to be ready when I'm going to read them. I can't recommend this historical detective series enough. Maisie Dobbs opens up after she serves as a nurse in World War I, she opens up her own detective agency. And now since this is the 11th in the series, now things are gearing up for World War II where there are whispers of it, but it hasn't, nothing has emerged yet. Um, but I adore the character of Maisie. Some people say they think she's not flawed, but I think she's just a very um, kind of closed off person. And so you don't see, get a glimpse into her until you read more into the series. And I think you really do then and you see what she struggles with. Um, but oh, I really, really loved it. Um, and then a new detective series I'm very excited about, and that is the Longmire series by Craig Johnson. I read the first, which is The Cold Dish, and these are set in Montana or Wyoming. I'm going to write it right there because I always get it wrong because I've never been to that part of the country. So to me, they kind of blend together. Um, and it was delightful. So I have always wanted to read Westerns, but then when I try them, um, it's like there's so much plot that I feel you don't get to know the characters. So this to me is like the detective series I never knew I always needed. It's got that Western flair to it, but it's a mystery. And so it's kind of best of both worlds for me. It's plot, but then just the way the, the type of writers that are attracted to mysteries do the characterization that I like generally. So I really loved the character of um, Walt Longmire. Um, he's gruff. Um, he's unpolished. He's uncouth. Um, but he is sharp as a tack. And um, I, the narrator, I did the audiobook of this and the narrator was just like, Mwah, like perfect, perfect voice. So I will be watching the Netflix series at some point, but I want to get a few books in before I do that. And um, I started the next audiobook and another one that my reading game was just so bad in August and September, I did not finish it and it expired. So I have it reserved. It's going to come back to me, hopefully once Victober is done. Then I read The Lost Man by Jane Harper. This was really, really intense. I had read The Dry by Jane Harper. Um, and this is a standalone and it's just this man is found um, stranded um, in the bush in Australia. And that's, you're, if you're stranded without food or water um, in that heat and in that sun, things are not looking so good. And they don't know how he got there. And um, this really is about a family and how, uh, like the pain that a family can feel and the wounds that a family can not heal and just close over for a time and think that things are okay. It has a lot of really hard things in it. It's extraordinarily written, though. Um, I love uh, the way Jane Harper brings you so up close and personal with the characters. It's gritty. It's haunting. It's so good. Um, so, yeah, if you want a really hard hitting uh, one that she almost feels like thriller, it's that, you know, that little border there between mysteries and thrillers. Um, and then I read aloud to Peter, The Marvelous Inventions of Alvin Fernald. And if you are a little boy who loves adventures and 
inventions, you will love this book. <laughs> so I enjoyed it. The writing was fun. Um, it just had a lot of good old fashioned like sense of adventure to it. It was a really fun read aloud. I would not have enjoyed it on my own. So I think it's neat. There are certain books that are just better experienced with others, um, you know, kind of who will get the magic of them and certain books that are experienced better as audio book. So um, uh, the Anne of Green Gable series, I'm just having a lot more fun doing them as audio book and I'm not going to feel like guilty about that. I'm just loving it that way. Um, and then I read the 17th Agatha, Ra Agatha Raisin, Love, Lies, and Liquor. Um, and again, 17th in the series, so there's not much I can tell you. I love the series. I am definitely going to read through to completion because now I only have 13 left. I'm way over halfway. Um, and the next one is set at Christmas, so I think I will save it for December. But the only trouble is that that one is set at Christmas. Then there are two more. And then the fourth one, like after that, is set at Christmas again. I don't think I want to binge for Agatha Raisin in December, but I don't like reading it. Not then. This is such a first world problem, I do realize. Um, then, let's see. Um, okay, Island Magic by Elizabeth Googe. This is for my TBR stack project. So I will not talk about it here. I will wrap it up in that video, which I do have that video coming soon. Um, and another read aloud was The 21 Balloons um, by William Pinay Dubois. This was really fun. It was very, um, oh, my husband said the term and I can't remember now. Um, but it was very kind of like self-indulgent fantasy. It didn't have um, the like the world building wasn't that full, but it was just very fun. It had um, just, you could tell he really enjoyed himself while writing it. And Peter loved this one. So again, another one I really enjoyed as a read aloud. It had a lot of charm to it. And um, I was surprised kind of at the direction the story took. There were several chapters in there that were so like the mechanics of the hot air balloons or whatever that I was like, skim, skim, skim. Like I'm not reading this aloud. Peter even said he wasn't interested in it. Uh, but overall, I did really enjoy it. And then I read The Making of a Marchioness by Frances Hodgson Burnett. This is a Cinderella retelling of sorts, so I will save this for my next Cinderella Chronicles video. And then I read Frankenstein. So if you are triggered by people that don't absolutely love Frankenstein, just see yourself out right now because I did not love Frankenstein. Unfortunately, I was kind of expecting that I would. I think because I did not expect to like Dracula and I loved Dracula, I just thought, oh, I'm going to love Frankenstein too. So firstly, let me say her writing is stellar. I was blown away by Mary Shelley's writing. It was, um, it was grotesque. And I mean that as a compliment, like she went there with the grittiness, with the darkness, um, I really, really liked it. I was surprised at how much sympathy I had for the monster as opposed to that terrible man, Victor Frankenstein. Um, but it's the same complaint I have with superhero films, which sounds weird, but here's the thing, okay? With superhero films, you're on this like journey with them through a big, crazy moment. So you get to know them when they're like in fight or flight mode in that but I don't feel like you get to know the well-rounded version of them. Whereas I feel like stories where there are um, hills and valleys, you get to know a more complete version of the character. And so I came out not really feeling like I got to know Victor Frankenstein um, or Elizabeth, other characters in there. Um, with the monster, I almost felt like I got to know him more. And so it's not the kind of reading experience that I like. The writing was amazing um, and it makes me want to read more Mary Shelley, but not quite what I was hoping to get out of it. And then I reread Daniel Deronda. So I'm hoping, fingers crossed, to do a video for you on my experience rereading Daniel Deronda. Even though I have a review up of Daniel Deronda, I, I just have more thoughts and I need to get them out. I need to, to tell you all about them. So I hope you enjoyed hearing about my, what was it again? My July through September reading and I will be back for another video soon. Thanks for watching and I hope you have a lovely day. Bye.